Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Amanda Johnstone Bat. I'm a CG supervisor with the um, in Frame Store with at our London office. Um, and today, I really want to talk to you about how we're using Unreal Engine in theme park rides, and what the next wave of theme park rides with immersive entertainment is going to start to look like. Um, but before I do that, I just want to give you a little bit of background about me and why I'm here talking to you today. Uh, this is baby me before she discovered hair dye and got weird. Uh, I grew up really close to here, actually, um, uh, just next to Disneyland, in fact. And theme parks were a regular part of life for me growing up. Um, my mom actually used Disneyland as a babysitting service for most of my life. She would drop me off really early in the morning, pick me up after work. I didn't complain one day at all. It was great. Uh, and then kind of turning 18, me and all of my friends decided to get jobs at Disneyland. Some of them ran churro stands or operated some of the rides. I had a slightly different job, and I'm not really allowed to tell you what I did because I know there's some Imagineers walking around who will sue me. Um, but I was in a stage show called Fantasmic and became best friends with some of your Disney favorites, is what I'm allowed to say. Hopefully some of you can read between the lines there. Uh, and after about two years, I really wanted to get into the film industry, so I was going to art school at the time, uh, and I did that. I've been working in visual effects for about 13 years. Got to work on some really big, amazing movies and a couple of Oscar winners, which is really cool, and got to do that around the world. But a few years ago, I um, decided that I wanted to move on and it tried to find something that could take the experience away from a flat screen that you might have in front of you and bring the audience into these immersive stories. So that's where Framestore came into my life. Uh, in the film industry, Framestore is known for its big budget visual effects films like Gravity or the Harry Potter movies. But as, uh, in the past 30 years as a company, we've diversified into other media-based arenas. Uh, 80s synth pop fans will love the Take On Me video from AHA, was one of the very first things that they did, which is pretty cool. Over time, it's really amazing how far and how fast technology has developed and how the demand for digital content keeps expanding across new platforms and new ways of telling stories. So as a result, we no longer describe ourselves as a visual effects studio, but rather as a creative studio. Whether we're creating something for a giant cinema screen, an installation in Times Square, a VR headset, or even a theme park ride, each platform is just another way for us to tell a visual story. Uh, for a number of years, Framestore's immersive entertainment departments were already working on projects that could easily be considered attractions in their own right. From the house reel you watched a little while ago, you can see we've covered a lot of ground in location-based entertainment. For Samsung, we created an in-store experience to simulate walking on the moon. 
The action takes place in a custom designed simulator rig and an inertial measurement unit spacesuit. I've tried to say that three times fast, and I cannot, and I flub that line every single time. Um, so this registers the user's weight in real time and offsets it to emulate the gravity of the moon's surface, which is a lot of fun. Oh, there we go. Uh, the Volkswagen Hyper Reality Test Drive was a physical experience covering the area the size of a football field where a script was mapped to certain content triggers to create action highlights. This custom trigger system ensured total synchronicity between in-game and real-world effects for six Volkswagens running the test drive at any given time. Now, all of these projects show you how we're focused on pulling you into the environment. Oh, and I went too far too quick. Um, and as a result of that, Framestore decided that they wanted to have a team that could focus specifically on uh, doing theme park rides. And here we are. Um, this is a lot of our research and work trips. There's no fun being had here whatsoever, I can assure you. It's very serious business. Um, but this team really appealed to me because I could learn and experience new mediums without leaving the visual effects industry, leveraging my technical knowledge from film and television while creating larger enveloping stories. Uh, so this year, and actually today, in fact, a, a theme park called Lionsgate Entertainment World has opened, and that's got five new attractions that Framestore created. There is a VR roller coaster, a VR motion base, a VR walkthrough experience, as well as a 2D motion base ride and a 2D dark ride. Uh, we also did a lot of the media that would be on all of the screens in the environmental media areas of the section of the park. Um, for the three rides, the three VR rides, we used Unreal from prototype to final delivery, but all of our rides have used Unreal and VR in pre-visualization, motion capture, as well as prototyping and reviewing any perspective warped media or spatial audio throughout the ride and the park. Uh, now, Location-based entertainment can be really tricky because um, the only way to view all of this ride in context is to be in China. So Unreal came and became incredibly valuable for us because it was the only way that we could preview all of this material in context and get to see how the story would work spatially um, for everyone doing it. Because you can't fly me to China every single time that you want to do a daily session. Uh, um, so I can't talk to you about all of the rides that we've got because I just don't have the time. So I really want to focus on two of my favorites. The first being a Twilight ride because everybody's been waiting their whole life for Twilight to be a ride. It's actually loads of fun. Um, Framestore is Team Jacob and we're very excited to be. Uh, this is Midnight Rides and it's one of our most technically impressive attractions that Framestore has ever worked on. Um, it's a VR experience with motorbikes mounted on state-of-the-art motion bases, and riders use custom-designed VR headsets to place them inside of a virtual reality Forks Washington, because I'm sure all of you know your uh, Twilight uh, trivia and know that it's Forks Washington where Jacob's from. No? No? Just me? Okay, great. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> The experience sees visitors mount motorcycles to join Jacob Black and his wolf pack in a journey through the forest to hunt down newborn vampires. Uh, you actually go in large teams, um, and we use body and gesture tracking so that you can identify who your friends are in that moment. Um, and you actually have agency over your motorcycle on the track, so you two can weave around each other or take different paths while dodging sparkly vampires at the same time. Uh, next up is the Divergent Fear Simulator based on the Divergent series. This was by far the widest brief that Framestore got for an attraction, um, and it was to create a fear-based fear walkthrough VR experience. Uh, visitors to the experience are given a VR headset and backpack as they prepare to face three fears inside of the simulator, uh, that being vertigo, darkness, and a sort of surreal nightmare scenario. 
Uh, they're all supposed to be terrifying VR environments that are tied to the physical world. So it was really important to us that if somebody reached out to touch an object or a textured surface, it was actually there. Uh, we want visitors to be put on edge the entire time and make it feel as real as possible, um, which was incredibly vital, uh, vital for this experimental attraction. Uh, next up, I get to show you some of the cool stuff that we're working on now. Uh, we've recently partnered with an engineering firm to design some new ride types, and Game Changers is the product of that partnership. Uh, not only do I think that they're really cool examples of what Framestore is working on, but it's really also uh, describing where the industry is going as a whole. Uh, so for a lot of these, we're looking at goal-based gameplay, like video games, where members can take on different roles and challenges to advance. But we also really want riders to be able to decide how the story is going to unfold for them. In the case of the reaction coaster, we want the rider to influence not only the media displayed, but the speed and the movement of the coaster. And using motion and gesture controls, the rider can change the speed and the direction of the vehicle, giving them access to different uh, story Easter eggs and varying uh, difficulty levels. The goal is to create a coaster that will be different every single time that you play it. And all of these different possibilities and variations increase the likelihood of people wanting to repeat the rides. So if you happen to catch a screen that I missed when I ride it, I'm going to want to ride it again so I can see if I can catch it or do something entirely different than either of us had experienced before. Um, now, originally, these were designed to be in shopping malls, but they've been moved to other mixed-use case scenarios. And one of the things that really helps with immersion is getting able to change some of the visuals to match your surrounding space. So using Unreal, we've been able to tap into live data feeds and change things like the time of day or even certain weather conditions to match the area around you. Next up is Tower Bottle. So building on the idea of users influencing the ride vehicle, Tower Battle allows you to affect not only your vehicle, but in opposing teams as well. So here we have two drop towers with a translucent screen between the teams. Uh, we want to have the flexibility to include both uh, controller-driven actions as well as gesture controls. So these varying degrees of inputs allow us to change the experience from something arcade-like to more of a story narrative where each car is trying to escape obstacles. Now, the goal is to maintain the uh, excitement of a drop tower while just adding an additional layer of narrative over the top. Uh, now, also with additional things such as wearable technologies like uh, Apple Watch or Disney's Magic Bands that include RFID and NFC technology, current we're, currently we're able to pull information like your name, your age, where you're coming from, but we're also hoping to push information to these devices as well, like how you scored on the ride. So later on throughout the day, a character actor in the park could come and talk to you about that, and that brings the experience of the ride out and affects the rest of your day as well, which is pretty cool. We want things that last beyond just five minutes of riding the ride. My favorite is the Adventure Machine. It's based on an interactive uh, choose-your-own-adventure book. And riders are faced with an obstacle. And if they, as a team, shoot more zombies on the right, the car and the story will progress right. And if the team choose uh, the left, a different scene will play out in front of them. We want these choices to feel invisible and natural, so you don't feel like you're making them, in an effort to keep the narrative fluid. Unreal also allows us to customize the media to each ride vehicle, like maybe starting a fire in one scene and then we see the glow in the next. So instead of having an option of either A or B, content can change based on how you got there. It's also possible to include more interacti uh, interactivity than the standard shoot 'em up style. Uh, so like maybe we might have some button mashing or we could have some sword fighting which is fun and weird dancing clowns. Uh, but really, people just love shooting things, so we like to give them what they want. Now, each of these rides has one primary goal. Utilize the advancements in real-time technology to create an adaptable narrative driven by the audience. We really want these to be stories of your own design, unique to each person who ride them, and can last beyond the five-minute ride experience. Um, 
Thank you very much. That's my time for the day. So again, my name is Amanda Johnstone Bat, and if you have any questions or if you just want to nerd out about theme park rides, I'll be right over there so you can see me. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>